All right, what's up, guys? So I'm super excited. I'm trying to contain it. Uh, it's been a long road for this Connects board, and I have uh, it behind me running on our big new table we got, the <laughs> big work area. Um, I am adding some color combinations to the strobe mode, uh, or excuse me, the SOS mode. So not only do you have the amber white and the red blue, but I kind of went through and added several other colors. Um, I have my laptop here uh, with the code up, um, kind of writing some code, some colors, and then, you know, using the flasher and flashing the board. Um, so this gives us complete flexibility since I can make changes to the code and virtually do kind of whatever we want within the limitations of the processor and the memory on the board. Um, but the unique thing we're doing is for the SOS mode, the Stro mode, and the Patriot mode, since they all have sub options, um, we actually store your selected option on the memory on the board. So if you select Stro mode and you know you kind of go through one of the speeds, it saves that speed. So when you come back to it and activate again, it will start at that speed again. So that's really cool. Um, it's because a little stuff like that, I feel like um, some companies miss. Um, so that way, if you know you find a speed you like, it's always going to be there. You find a Patriot mode you like, it's always going to be there until you change it. Um, same with the SOS mode. Um, so behind me, you can see it kind of flashing, but I'm going to try to break these up into, <laughs> I want to do shorter videos, but I'm almost at two minutes. Um, of just kind of the different modes, the different patterns, and kind of get some feedback from you guys. Um, obviously, we can always update the board and flash it, but if we resin it and make it fully waterproof, then we don't have access to the flasher um, or the ports to flash again, so I can't update it. Plus, it's also going to be kind of a hassle, you know, if I do keep improving it, adding more stuff to it, then you would have to remove it from your machine and ship it back to us. Um, so we're trying to figure that out as well. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of other apps have over the air stuff, but we're, we're not there yet. You know, we're not there to be able to do over the air flashing yet. So maybe soon, but um, this project was just a huge undertaking um, on top of the fact that, you know, part shortages, you know, we would spec a part and test it and then, you know, it, it poses and works well. Well, then we'll go back and try to build a new prototype. Well, that one's, you know, not exist anymore. You know, some of these parts are 86 week lead times when you're trying to buy right from the manufacturer. Um, or we could go overseas, find the part, but then we're paying like four and five times markup um, just because they have them sitting on the shelf. So it's just this stuff, constant challenge, you know, we've been facing through this, you know, COVID that has um, added to the timeline of this. Um, but the good news is, I think we're here. Um, again, I'll start a new video here and kind of show you, I'm trying to test kind of a lot of use cases. So if you have a massive system, you know, 16 rock lights, you know, whips, halos, everything, you know, does it work? Or a more basic setup of just a pair of whips and halos, does it work? Because those values and the resistances are different among those. So we just need to test every edge case um, to make sure everything works. So let me flip you around. Let me set up the camera on the tripod and let me kind of start trying to show you, uh, you know, how it's looking. All right. So uh, here we go. We have just a pair of four foot whips. As you see, halos uh, up at the front here and then just a pair of rock lights. So these are on the same channel. Um, the same thing over there. And this is on the pass through channel. So this does not get affected by any turn signal break reverse they will always just kind of do patterns and um, whatever's kind of coming from the Bluetooth controller. Um, and then you have your halo, which is on right turn signal and then left turn signal. Uh, so as you see right now, it's just running from the controller. Uh, it's, you can change it from the app. Uh, I should have got the tablet, but you know, we can go through patterns. It's on kind of demo mode right now. Um, and then like I was demoing earlier, if I were to activate street only mode, uh, so if you were to say hit a public road in a place where you know they would you know, pull you over if you had a bunch of crazy lights going, you can activate street only mode. And then it disables the output and it go, uh, turns the lights what we call black. 
So it defaults them to black, so that way you don't have any lights coming through. Um, and like I showed before, turn signal still works, reverse works, and brake works. But it always goes back to what we call black. Um, it doesn't keep the patterns going. So that's something cool. So you can have this on a switch, uh, so you can just instantly, anytime, just bam, bam, everything goes dark. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that's a cool thing we have. So I disable it, take it off. Um, and all these inputs are triggered by uh, 12 volts. So you can wire them basically directly to a rocker switch or any kind of source that has 12 volts. Um, something else I was working on is, so this is the, uh, what we call Patriot mode. Uh, so you can kind of see this is one of the patterns I selected and it went back to doing that pattern. And then with a momentary switch, I can kind of put 12 volts to one of the inputs and take it off real quick and it will cycle and kind of go through those different patterns. So I think that's probably my favorite one right now. Um, take it off and then we're back to kind of what's coming out of the controller. Uh, now I will go to the stro mode I will activate strobe mode and you can see it's blinking very, very fast and it's doing the patterns. And then like I mentioned, we have, you know, several different speeds of strobing that, you know, is built into the board that we coded. So we can kind of select the speed you want it to go. So that's strobe mode. It just, whatever's coming through from the controller, it will strobe it. So if you want to put on a solid color or one of the patterns you like, you can do that. Um, and then SOS mode, you actually activate by the Patriot and the strobe trigger. You turn both of those on at once and it will turn on and activate strobe mode. Um, and right now it was on uh, what I was trying to do, like a, a yellow or an orange. Um, but let me run through all the different patterns of this. Yeah, it's triggering and untriggering here, so I'm trying to get it set. All right, so we have, uh, before this, it was the uh, amber whites, um, and then you see the red blue. And to start, that's what I had on there, just amber white and red blue. And I was like, well, I have the ability to do a lot more patterns, so let me do that. Now, let me get these set there. There we go. So if I trigger it, you see it does a red white, and cycle it. We got a green, then a blue white. Uh, that's like a yellow, then a magenta. And so I just tried to think of kind of other patterns you would want to initiate, and then it goes back around to the amber white I told you about earlier. So that's SOS mode. So the concept of what we were thinking there was, say you blow out a tie rod or tire on the side of a trail, you can activate SOS mode and you know, it'll let people know, hey, you know, watch out for me, I'm sitting on the side of the road. Uh, so that's uh, something we thought would be useful uh, for this kind of board. Um, so something else I wanna run through, cause I know people ask this and I feel like it's a frustration for a lot of them. Uh, so as you see, we have turn signal going as well as the external 12 volt uh, into our relays. Put you back up here. Well, what happens if you, say, hit the brakes? Well, as you notice, the other side blinked and went red. But you can see the other two channels, uh, so the four rock lights and the halo, is still just doing whatever the patterns are doing. Um, so if you're doing a turn signal and brake, you have it. Now, if you do, what if you have turn signal on but reverse? Let me trigger the reverse it will override the rear of the machine to do the reverse uh, because we felt if you're on a hill and you have turn signal on, but then you have to back up, you know, having a flashing light behind you would be very distracting, especially if it's a really dark trail. Um, so we kept it where it was, it would stay white until you disable that. Um, and then as I disable the reverse trigger, it went back to blinking and then I can you know, take off the reverse trigger and then it goes back to kind of doing the uh, basic uh, patterns. So 
Uh, there's a kind of a, a quick run through again of the patterns and some of the features we have on here. You know, please let us know. This is, um, let us know if you have any questions. This is, you know, backwards compatible with any of our Rhino 2.0 controllers. Uh, so we have the music controller. Um, and then for a brief time, we had kind of our basic Bluetooth controller, but this will work for it. Uh, so our next step now is to, uh, we're gonna get more prototypes built and then kind of do a soft launch some, with some local customers just to ensure everything works like we want because no matter what we do on a local, you know, tabletop bench testing, you know, products out there in the wild and customers, uh, we always get more feedback and more testing. So uh, we'll probably get those in next week, get them installed, and if everything starts looking well, we will, you know, actually start making these and start shipping these kits. Um, the whole goal of kind of what we want to do is we have a case for this and we will fully resin this case so it's fully waterproof and you'll have leads coming out that you can tie into um, on your machine. So you'll take your controller, run the data line into here and then your positive and negative you'll run to a power source which for me is just this little meanwhile AC to DC converter. Uh, so that way you can turn this sucker on, tie it into your system and then as you see, it looks kind of crazy, but you basically have, you know, a channel for your whip to go on. As you'll see, it'll say left all whips, left all rock lights. If you have those, you know, uh, products from us, um, you know, you might take all your rock lights and just run them through what we call the pass-through channel because you don't want to have your rock lights get interfered with turn signal or break or anything like that. So you can put a four piece, eight piece, 16 piece, whatever you want on that pass through channel and power all the rock lights that way. So again, if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, this is, you know, completely new territory as far as functionality on a board. You know, I feel like we definitely push the limits of technology with this, with our boosting technology to be able to power all this. I mean, that was a large struggle for us was to find that balance of, um, boosting technology to get all this to work together with all the different size wire resistances links so here we are we have it going and stay tuned sign up for our newsletter we will be sending out updates uh you know very frequently with this because it's a very large requested item for us people have been waiting a long time for this so we're finally we're excited um, we're looking forward to the feedback and what people do with this um, we're, you know, it's definitely feel like it's going to, uh, help people do very massive kits that do a lot of functionality. So I appreciate it guys. Um, uh, let us know if you have any questions.